Okay, so we'll get started. So welcome everyone. My name is Lamari. I'm the Senior Director of Community Engagement at the Decentralized Identity Foundation. Uh, this is one of our side sessions of our ongoing hackathon, which will be open until December 1st. So there's 25 days of hacking left. We're very happy to be joined by Ontology today. Uh, we are joined by the uh, community lead, the director of community at Ontology, Humpty Calderon, um, and also their head of marketing, Randy, um, who will also be speaking about um, Ontology ID, Ont ID, and the challenge that they have right now that you can join, that you can sign up for during the ongoing Diff Hackathon. Um, so if you haven't signed up for it already, definitely um, head over to DevPost. This is where we are running our hackathon over the next 25 days. In addition to side sessions, um, I will have the, I'll drop the link in the chat, but also what I'll do is I'll put it in on YouTube as well. So if you're watching from YouTube, you'll, you'll have access to it. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, hand it over to Humpty, who is going to give you an overview of their Aunt ID challenge and tell you more about ontology. Wonderful, thank you so much uh, for that great introduction. I started to drop some links in the chat already, so apologies for jumping the gun there. Uh, we do have a couple of links that I wanna be sharing throughout the discussion. So do keep an eye on the comments. Um, I'm gonna be sharing some links there. So, so far, the two links that I've shared are the dev post, um, as Lamari mentioned, and the um, ontology's uh, ont ID uh, documentation. So go ahead and access those now. So before getting started, I want to say a very, 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 very big thank you to the Decentralized Identity Foundation for putting this together, uh, for inviting us, and for allowing us to present on this session. Uh, I'm joined today by uh, my colleague, Randy, uh, and perhaps sometime during the call, Dr. Mao as well. So my name is Humpty Calderon. I'm the head of community at Ontology. And what that just means is a very fancy way of saying making sure that individuals and organizations and hackers have the resources they need. So I'm going to be pestering the team uh, to make sure that uh, they provide the support necessary for you to be successful. So with that said, uh, I'm going to start a presentation here. So I'm going to hopefully see if I can share my screen. Hopefully that works. Let's see. Let me know if you can see that, please. Yes, I can see it. OK, wonderful. All right, uh, so the first slide here, obviously, is just a general introduction to um, this event, this uh, ontology's participation in it. Uh, some of the things that we're going to be talking about uh, during the session is going to be a very broad general introduction to ontology, uh, both its uh, ecosystem, starting with a, uh, the blockchain, but also its uh, decentralized identity framework and decentralized identity stack. Um, which in my opinion is, is quite rich uh, and has a lot of opportunities for anybody who wants to start building with ontology. Um, I think it's uh, hard to get started without, without acknowledging the fact that the Decentralized Identity Foundation or being a member of DIFF has been highly formative for ontology. Uh, ontology uh, became a member back in 2017. And while perhaps it hasn't been the most active contributor, it certainly has been influential in the technology that Ontology has developed. And we're excited to be here, like I mentioned earlier, uh, because we are now able to present a challenge to people and resources as well for them to build uh, some fantastic user experiences. And really, that's what it's all about, at least for us at Ontology. So one of the things that I think we're going to dive into here right now, right off the bat, is Ontology's multi-VM support. And really, why is this relevant? How is this important? Well, first of all, it shows that Ontology provides resources that are accessible to developers of all kinds. So in terms of blockchain development, I think it's a familiar flavor to be Solidity uh, compatible. However, uh, Ontology is, if not one of the only 
blockchain that supports for virtual machines. And through that support, it actually provides developers with familiarity in terms of being able to use languages that they may be familiar with already. For example, as you can see on the slide here, Python, C Sharp, Rust, Solidity, um, all of these things allow for you to build in a way that is uh, you know, accessible to you based on what you're familiar with. Um, this is also important because you know, Ontology leverages its blockchain uh, to be able to build um, OntID. Uh, and so the OntID being, as we'll discuss in a little bit, Ontology's uh, implementation of the W3C uh, DID standard. So here we just see a timeline of these virtual machines as they've progressively uh, matured, uh, starting with, you know, OntVM, uh, NeoVM in 2018, uh, adding Wasm VM in 2019, and then most recently, uh, EVM support. So this also uh, speaks to the interoperability that Ontology uh, seeks to provide uh, businesses that are developing applications with Ontology's tech stack. And again, that's going to be reinforced in a bit when we talk about OntID and it's interoperability across different blockchains as well. So this here, I think, just continues to um, speak to more of the technical architecture of smart contracts and ontology and how they interact with the native contracts on VM. So here again, talks about the breadth of um, opportunities or the, the breadth of work that ontology has done for providing a useful platform for developers. First and foremost is about interoperability. So as we saw earlier, having that multi-VM support uh, provides developers with the ability to um, create cross-chain or multi-chain experiences. Cheap inefficiencies uh, is about, you know, ontology's infrastructure, but also ontology's consensus, uh, you know, work. Uh, technology and I think it's kind of it's one um, of a few that actually distinguish themselves and being able to uh, use technology to create efficiencies and of course the reason why we're here to talk about decentralized identity and data um, you know ontology has been working with OntID and creating uh, supporting tools and platforms for six uh, going on six years now as well so what resources are available for you as a developer who's attending this, whether you're here live or you are, um, you know, listening to this afterwards on the on the recorded. But some of these things are onto, and there's two different flavors of that, of which I'll talk a little bit more at length in a moment. But there's there's also some uh, dev tools here that are available to you, starting with Remix, Truffle, Hard Hat, and if you have questions specifically, if you're asking questions, um, I would um, definitely start asking questions there. And so when Dr. Mao comes in, he can answer those questions directly from you, or I, we can copy those and share them and then respond to you directly on the uh, Decentralized Identity Foundation Discord after the event. And by the way, I wanted to start, and I totally forgot, I wanted to start with a poll. So for anybody who's in the audience, I really wanted to understand what your familiarity was with um, DIDs. So if you're in the audience and you feel comfortable, right? You don't have to be like fluent, but comfortable with DIDs. I know the DIF has been put, putting together several events. So hopefully if you've been attending those, there is a level of comfort to what that is and um, become conversational, press a one. Uh, if not, if you're still kind of uh, nervous about what is uh, DID, you can press a two. Uh, I'd love, I love polling because I think afterwards it gives me a good sense of how to direct the conversation uh, if we need to be a little bit more um, high level or we can get a little deeper. Yeah, I see a lot of ones. Okay, awesome. Y'all been paying attention to the lessons and sessions at Decentralized Identity Foundation. So great job, everyone. So breaking down here a little bit more uh, deeply, what is OntID? <laughs> Claire, your middle name is Did. I love it. Um, OntID is a multi-chain decentralized identity framework again, based on the W3C standard uh, for creating identifiers and issuing credentials. Um, more deeply, 
in terms of, and I think this is something that I don't need to explain to most of you, but I still will read through this anyways to, for anybody who listens to this afterwards and may not be so familiar with it, uh, can still understand it. It's an open protocol, allows you to manage multiple identities. One of the, cool, the coolest things that I enjoy about DIDs in the blockchain space is be able, the ability to bind multiple identities, uh, which I think is a superpower in blockchain. Uh, data security and privacy, secure self-sovereign identity management, network protocol for trust anchors, which we'll talk a little bit in a, in, in, in a few slides, uh, certificate of claims to satisfy multidimensional trust endorsement and comprehensive SDKs, of, again, of which we'll cover in a moment. So the beneficiaries for DIDs or ONTID specifically are the users, right? To be able to uh, own, manage uh, their identities, in a much more self-sovereign way, if not in a self-sovereign way, as opposed to you know other identities like social identities and emails, which are uh, owned and managed by centralized authorities, uh, and it has no level of privacy, right? Uh, the app developers to be able to create more integrated and interoperable experiences, uh, both using DIDs, uh, OnTID as the framework, but also using Ontology's uh, multi-VM support. And businesses, because you can integrate all of this seamlessly, hopefully, on top of your existing systems. My guess is yes, because we've actually worked with several businesses to do this. And Randy will be talking about one of those examples as well. So some of the SDKs here that are available, uh, as, so basically, this is going to be your interaction point as a developer on the hackathon. The first and most important would be those fundamental SDKs, ID SDK and VC SDK, so for creating identities and for issuing credentials. And then some of the ontology uh, SDKs that have been built specifically for facilitating some of the different uh, tools that ontology has built, Mercury, OntLogin, and OnTag, of which I'll expand in the following slides. If anybody has questions, again, feel free to drop them in the comments. I, I'm i always pretty open about like you know, going back and forth. So it won't make me nervous. Okay, so I think these are probably familiar to most of you because these are really uh, the way that DIDs work, right? So to be able to, the IDSDK allows you to create, modify, and, and uh, deactivate on IDs, supporting multiple blockchain networks. I believe and I, I thought I saw a slide of this uh, in an earlier draft of this presentation. I don't know if it was removed, but Ontology supports seven or eight different blockchains. So OntID has been um, basically integrated onto like eight or seven or eight different blockchains. And the value of that really is the fact that you can create these interoperable experiences across chains. Um, so you're not necessarily just tied to creating uh, these self-sovereign experiences on Ethereum alone. Um, you can do this across multiple blockchains, including Ontology, and I believe uh, BNB Chain and Tron and just a lot of different uh, premier blockchains, EVM compatible ones too. And then VC SDK, which is used to generate verifiable credentials and presentations. And so on. So this is really kind of one of the cool unlocks of DIDs, obviously. Um, and if you want to learn more about that, definitely ping me um, in the questions or afterwards, and I'm happy to geek out about this. Mercury. So I'm just going to start by, uh, by prefacing. Um, this is one of the things that I would love to see someone build with, uh, because I'm a big fan of creating user experiences that are familiar and fun. Um, I think I have three Fs, but I forget what the other F is. Um, and so when you talk about communication platforms, you think of like social networks, you think of one-to-one -one messaging apps, right? Like uh, WhatsApp, WeChat, you know, Messenger, uh, wherever you're on the world, these peer-to-peer -peer communication platforms. Um, however, to be able to leverage self-sovereign technology like DIDs and VCs, I think would be incredibly great to see and I think incredible, incredibly valuable experience to build as well. So Mercury allows for you to be able to uh, connect and transmit messages uh, using DIDs and VCs. So um, this would be one of the ones that I would be very interested in seeing someone pick up. 
Aunt Login is another one uh, that I think is really cool. Um, Aunt Login, if you think of the way that you could sign in with Facebook, sign in with Google, um, you know, with these, uh, you know, Web3 social, or sorry, so these social uh, accounts, you can do the same with a Web3 social account uh, using Aunt ID. So you could sign in with Aunt ID and you can see how that provides a level of familiarity and flexibility uh, to people to be able to uh, connect and authenticate and uh, even generate reputation, right? Because we'll talk about that in a moment in terms of what Ontology has built to be able to um, provide a level of um, provable reputation uh, using decentralized identity. So Aunt Login is, is definitely another one that I would like to see more people building with. So Aunt Tag, that is basically Ontology's service for developers to provide KYC. So for those instances where you need to know your customer, uh, Ontology provides OnTag as a service, which aggregates some of the uh, top uh, KYC providers. So these are industry leading organizations. I think you may have seen them already before if you've done any kind of uh, KYC and some other you know, platform or protocol. Uh, Identity Mind, CFCA, Shifty Pro, and I believe don't quote me on the, but this, but also Plaid. So I think that's a really cool way of like inter integrating KYC uh, without necessarily having to uh, manage that on your own, which I don't think anybody wants to do. <laughs> At least you shouldn't, uh, in my opinion. Um, okay, so some of the use cases. I'm gonna go through these, but I believe Randy is going to also extend on some of these as she talks about the challenge in a moment. So there are two applications here that I'm extremely fond of. One of probably more so than the other because I personally was involved in its development uh, from the very beginning. Uh, but the first year we're gonna talk about is Onto. And I think Onto was one of the reasons why I joined Ontology. Um, I personally was a developer on Ontology. I don't know if I even introduced myself at the top of this presentation, so I'm sorry if I didn't. Um, I was just really excited to get into it. But um, yeah, I was a developer on Ontology and I was very familiar with their uh, blockchain technology, but decentralized identity was one of the things that truly, I felt truly separated Ontology from a lot of other uh, different uh, blockchains. And specifically the products that they were building to support that decentralized identity ecosystem. And Onto Wallet is one of the ones that, I, that really just um, helped me understand not just a, the importance of decentralized identity, but also the importance of making things accessible uh, to people. And so when you download Onto Wallet and create a wallet, you automatically have a decentralized identity or an Onto ID issued to your account, which if you're a developer and you're trying to easily issue DIDs to your users, leveraging Onto Wallet, it might be the best and, and simplest way to do that. Um, you're also leveraging a pretty large uh, and active user base. Onto Wallet has over three years, uh, had, uh, I think we're at 1.6 million signups and uh, a active user base of 20,000 uh, per month. So, you know, it, it's, it's a it's really good when you can bootstrap your users to your to your application. So this might be a good uh, a resource for you to be able to build something and 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 bootstrap a user base already with it, especially if you're using Ont ID. Um, so and a lot of that usage, by the way, comes from the fact that there's over a thousand DApps supported. So yours could be the next one. Just a thought there. So yeah, allows you to uh, create and manage your identities, build a reputation, uh, and manage your data as well. So yeah, really powerful tool. Um, definitely one of my favorite ones uh, in the Anthology ecosystem, just in terms of products that allow for uh, you know more familiar and functional uh, usage of uh, DIDs and VCs. So Orange Protocol, uh, I'm gonna jump over here. And I think this is the one of the last slides that I'm presenting before I. Uh, make way for my colleague, Randy. 
Um, this is a product that I started contributing to um, early in my ontology career, if you will, right? In terms of understanding why, the why of DIDs, but really trying to find an application that was uh, solving a problem for a user or organizations. And that is, how can we credibly uh, reward people with access or privilege, uh, governance power in decentralized organizations? Orange Protocol allowed for several things to happen. So the first is by aggregating on-chain and off-chain data, users would sign in with either their MetaMask or Onto wallet uh, and uh, have a DID generated for them on the app. And that user would then, and I think that's the next slide. I'm just going to jump over there. Yeah. That user would then, or the, the, the protocol, excuse me, would then um, see if that user met that checklist of criteria that was predefined. And a verifiable credential was issued with a score of that user activity, right? So maintaining that privacy and security in terms of like user um, activity, that that doesn't necessarily have to live on chain. And then abstracting away that private data and issuing it as an on-chain primitive. In this case, there were SBTs, so soulbound tokens. Ret reputation is not for sale. Um, that was our mantra. And so we leveraged that technology in a way to be able to provide a level of reputation that was also revocable for the user. And so, I mean, if you look at this slide here, you can actually see uh, the fact that we were plugging in different sources of data, um, both on-chain and off-chain data, to generate the scores. And we were working with the customer directly, in this case, the organization, to identify what type of user they wanted to reward with these credentials. And so they can then use these credentials to provide anything from rewards using an airdrop, for instance, or uh, privileged access in a server. If the DIF has a Discord server, for instance, it could provision uh, exclusive access to certain members who have met some sort of criteria using on-chain and off-chain data, uh, for instance, uh, or governance power. So instead of having to buy your way into governance and buy a token, you can actually use your activity and credentials to do the same thing. So these are just some examples. And again, ways that you can think of how you can utilize the, the on stack to be able to create some really dynamic and powerful experiences um, you know, with DIDs and VCs. And this here just shows kind of the, um, the flywheel, I suppose, in terms of Orange Protocol and the way that it empowered both users and organizations and provided a level of civil resistance at the same time uh, based on historic data and uh, not something that could potentially be gamified uh, in terms of like future activity. So that's it. That's, that's my part of the presentation. Um, Randy will be picking it up here. I'm not sure if Dr. Mao was able to make it, but uh, as I mentioned before, even if you have some technical questions that we can't answer, please don't hesitate to drop those in the comments. We'll be taking those to our team and we'll be answering those at the Decentralized Identity Foundation Discord server. Randy? Yeah, thank you, Hanti. Yeah, I think uh, you can still share your screens. And so I don't actually need to switch a bit. So yeah, uh, to introduce the ontology challenge, uh, we want to make it as like more diverse and more uh, as much open as we could. So we will just let every developers to build anything with ONTID. And the ONTID is not limited to the uh, decentralized identifier, but it covers all the protocols, the frameworks, which Humpty has just introduced. So there's a lot of like uh, protocols you can build with. Uh, it can be a simple creation within the Onto wallet to create the uh, the basic ONT ID. 
or you can use the ONT logging, ONT tag to empower your applications with more decentralized identity powers functions. And uh, we will set the, uh, the, the price uh, into two uh, different like level. And the first level will be uh, 1000 USD and the second price will be 500 USD. Um, I do understand that the price we can offer here is very limited. But what I want to mention is that the Ontology Foundation do have an Ontology uh, Eco Fund. So which means we will be giving the additional support. Um, it, it's not limited to the like the fund uh, size, but also the contribution to the technical business leads and also the marketing support to every project built either with the ONT ID or built on the ontology blockchain. And uh, what I want to emphasize here is that all the like uh, Web3 builders will have the hesitation on if the DID actually would make impact for our real life. People, there's lots of builders that uh, working around DeFi, working around the NFTs, because it's an easy way for them to monetize that their contribution in Web3 words. So people will definitely care about that, how they can make money with crypto. But the thing is that as blockchain technology is really uh, like powerful to giving the uh, privacy and data uh, rights back to everyone. So we actually emphasize a lot for the builders to build a application that can actually solve a real world privacy and data protection problem. So if anyone builds with the projects that's aiming to solve the problem, it will definitely go higher. And uh, other than the, uh, the, the mission and vision of our challenge, so we are quite flexible on all the submission requirements. So it can be a simple one pager or intro deck to explain the concepts of the app, or you can provide a public URL for the deployed app so everyone could take a try. And uh, on top of that, you know, we are also encouraging the odd developers to provide a video if they could. And it can be a very simple one. Just want to help us to explain the usage of the app. And that will be uh, uh, more easy for our community members to know what you are building and what's the actual problems you are going to solve. So all the ontology use case can be found on our official website. And once you log into the ONT.io, simply click the, the solutions and it will provide like the previous use case we've done um, for the other projects and the collaboration, including that Daimler scene. And all the related documentation and guides can be found on our uh, ONT.id website directly or you can come to the developer's documentation center and find a specific page for the decentralized identity and data solutions there. So, uh, yeah, Hamti, could you switch to the next page, please? Yeah, thank you. So uh, regarding the use for docs, I was trying hard uh, together with Hamti to find a tutorial. It can be a video one for everyone that can follow every steps and actually build directly with the instructions there. But the answer I got from our technical team is that we've already packed all our technical protocols into the SDKs. So therefore, all the developers will be easily to integrate the protocols around the ONT ID directly to their either the web two applications or web three. So uh, if you have the interest, just go to the ontology GitHub and finding the directly the uh, Go SDKs and Java SDKs. And it, it provides you the uh, most fastest way to get things done there. 
And uh, I want to share a use case which has been already applied on the orange protocol. So for the next page, it shows that uh, the actual integration of the ONT logging SDK. So people usually take the logging systems uh, within Connect Wallet. But what makes it different when using the ONT logging is that once the users click the uh, Connect Wallet, and you can, I, I think maybe 99% of the users will click the MetaMask first. And it shows a page that's for your signature request. But the, what makes it different is that once you connect your wallet, it will be automatically create a DID for you. And as shown in the page, it, the DID name would be exactly the same as your wallet address there, but it can be customized within your profile under the orange protocol uh, profile there. And the reason why we are using this logging systems is that we want to uh, empower the uh, people with the DID. So if uh, the users of the Orange Protocol actually mint the uh, uh, Soulbound tokens or the reputation-based NFTs, or even they can find their uh, web too, like social logins uh, accounts within that DID under the Orange Protocol. And when you are using the same DID logging the other applications, all these VCs and identity can be reused. So you don't need to create and do the verification again. And therefore that will save more time and the users would be no need to care about their privacy issues there. So I think in long term, uh, the logging with the ID will be massively adopted. And it actually depends on the ecosystem building. So we are trying to uh, get in rich with different projects who are the fan of the DID, and then we can customize a solution for them and gradually they build the ecosystem to persuade that users to log in with the DID instead of the wallet. So uh, as the popularity of the uh, account abstraction, we are also going to empower more features on this build with the existing ONT ID. So uh, it's just a page and it's a, just a simple login but it actually shows that how the ONT ID can be adopted in a very easy way. And other than that, uh, another use case I wanna share is about our welcome home app in next slide. So it was actually a joint application we worked with Daimler. So for their self-sovereign income personalization, So, uh, for having this application, is that we want every drivers and the car owners actually preserving their data privacy and control. So the solution will only go uh, to the in-car experience. So just a uh, situation that when driving their cars. So you may like a, a specific like music to be played when you're driving. Uh, you want to set up like the angle of, of your mirror uh, or maybe you, 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 but once you travel to another like cities, it, you are not able to bring your car there. And you need to reset all the uh, car settings again 
and which is uh, completely new to your uh, to yourself because it's a relatively like new environment for you. But the thing is that using the welcome app, you just need to simply like click the apply, and within the uh within the IoT systems within the car, all the settings will be stored immediately. And all the data and the privacy is actually controlled by the car owner or the users. So there's no central storage platforms to access to your privacy, or to access your data. And you don't need to care about that. So I would say that for that specific applications, it actually takes around two years to make it done. But it shows that how the I applied in real life and solve your real problems and to solve your concerns there. Yeah, uh, I, I think that I just giving two simple use case there and there's actually more to be discussed. Uh, so um, I think that I got the information from Dr. Ma that he's actually have some technical issue with his internet. So he's, uh, uh, if you have any questions, just a group, and we will help you uh, giving the specific answers shortly uh, after the session today. And another suggestion is that uh, ontology do have a global uh, community. So we have different different languages, communities, and we have over 20 uh, different harbingers and admins supporting us. So they can provide any support uh, for on the technical or the business side. And they can, uh, you, you can just join our uh, communities and reach out to our harbingers there, and they will provide the support there. Um, for other like uh, social media channels, uh, I think the best channel to get the latest information about ontology will be our Twitter account. And for the developers, it's highly suggested to join the ontology uh, Discord channel. And we've already created a dev ch uh, channel there uh, for every like uh, technical related questions there. Uh, Thank you, Randy. Yeah, uh, we have a slide open uh, before this closing slide, obviously, uh, for questions. So if anybody wanted to ask questions, I think this is a good opportunity for us to uh, answer as uh, best we can. And like Randy said, if there's anything super technical, um, we're happy to uh, respond those uh, to those, excuse me, on the, on the Discord server later. Um, one suggestion since um, Kendall was having trouble getting on through the internet is it could be one possibility is maybe he can hold a little um, office hours if people do have questions. If I notice there's a lot of people who have specific questions, that might be a possibility. Um, but other than that is the best place to go if people are stuck and have questions about ontology. Do they go uh in to that discord channel you mentioned yeah i think randy correct me if i'm wrong here but we are both in the decentralized identity foundation server and mm -hmm. we have our own server so obviously mm -hmm. if people want to come into the ontology discord server by all means please do we have that pretty well uh, resourced in terms of the people that support our community there myself included um, but we can also make ourselves available in the Decentralized Identity Foundation server if people would like to just have a hackathon discussion specifically there. Sure. And um, and so we do have a channel in the hackathon Discord server. So I'm I'm dropping that in the chat if people would like to hop in there. Um, but of course you have all of ontologies resources as well that they went through in this presentation. And if you're watching after the fact, I'm going to have the links available for you as well. So you'll be able to have those. So I'll leave it open for any other questions that people might have in the room.
We may have been very thorough, too thorough in covering yeah, all you the were, questions. It I was did. Great. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was very thorough. Um, and it's great to know all that's there at ontology to have that overview. That's fantastic. Um, hold on one second. Someone is asking yeah. for the Discord link for ontology. We're going to drop that shortly. Mm -hmm. And I think also if anybody is listening to this after the event and wants the same thing, if you go to ONT.io, scroll all the way to the bottom, all of the social links are at the bottom. So the Discord link is the second one from the last, it looks like. But we have everything from our GitHub link, YouTube link, Reddit link, Telegram, Medium. So there's no shortage of uh, links for you to um, connect to the Ontology ecosystem. But I'm dropping it here anyways for the person who asked. Oh, it looks like Radio to drop one, but they're, they're, they all go to the same place. You know, the link here, but, but that for the... Yeah. And I just had a one quick question, which is if you could say a little bit more about the Mercury ID, because that's the, you said with Mercury ID, you can integrate both DIDs and VCs. Did I get that correct? Um, I think what I mentioned, and I'm going to try to, I'm just trying to find the uh, presentation. For some reason, it's no longer showing up uh, on my screen. But um, basically what I was uh, saying was that Mercury is a communication pr protocol that leverages a DIDs, um, you know, for that use case. I... Oh my goodness, so somehow I lost all of my links, but I sh in the documentations link that I linked earlier in the channel here, um, you should be able to find here. I'm going to link it again. Randy um, also dropped a link in there. I thought that oh, was- she did? Okay. Yeah, um, very yeah, useful. Thank you for helping me. Yeah, yeah I, I can uh, like add some, some, some clarification here. So the Mercury is a peer-to-peer -peer communication like protocols, which mm -hmm. means that usually when, when we are using the SMS, that you are sending your message to a centralized server and that server will send the message to B, from A to B. So your data and privacy actually uploaded to that centralized server. But using the Mercury, so we will using a, a ZK proof to power it like technology to get all your information that protected. So no server will be able to read this message. So that's what's uh, the, the reason why we do this up here. So for the technical side, I do believe there's different like agents uh, within that protocols. So for more details, you can definitely check that article. Uh, I just put it mm -hmm. there. So it gives you the uh, like explanation of the protocol and also giving some samples for the uh, the adoption scenarios there. Okay, excellent. Yes, I do see that. Thank you very much. And I will review. I just thought that would be something that would be of interest, uh, particular interest to people in the hackathon. Okay, thanks. Um, is there anyone else that has any questions in the room? I think there's one that just came in. Does ONT login have a concept of supporting authorization using a VC? Uh, the answer is yes, because we support the authentication and authorization. So you can use the ONT login to uh, for the VC verification. Yeah, that's the same question I just asked the uh, candle this afternoon. <laughs> Okay, and then we can get a follow up from Kendall as well on that question. And then uh, Mahesh, we could, um, if you're in the Discord server, uh, you drop into the ontology uh, link that I put there in the chat, um, then they, you can chat with the ontology folks to follow up more on that. Yeah, I'll make myself available. Uh, I know it's late for uh, Randy and Dr. Mao at this point because they're on, uh, in, in Asia. 
but um, I'll make myself available throughout the day. I'll be popping into the Discord server, the Diff Discord server. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask there. And then uh, when I go to sleep, uh, Randy wakes up. So it's a perfect, uh, <laughs> you know, team to be able to support 24 hours a day, the team that needs and is building with Ontology. Okay, awesome. Um, so I don't see any other questions coming through in the chat at this more at this moment. So I guess we'll we'll leave those for Discord later on. People can continue the discussion, and I'm sure you'll have more coming through in the coming days as well. So I want to thank both of you for joining us today. Thank you, Humpty and Randy. Thank you so much for joining us at this late hour where you are and also the rest of you who joined live. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, of course, uh, definitely if you have not registered yet for the hackathon, please do. That link will be um, in the chat uh, or in the, uh, the notes on YouTube. Um, and also we do have a couple of sessions tomorrow, one from TBD at 9 AM on their web five, followed by Polygon IDs presentation at uh, 10 AM Pacific time. So I hope to see everyone there. Um, and once again, thank you and, uh, enjoy the rest of your day or evening. Um, ontology will be co-hosting a space with uh, decentralized identity foundation on Thursday. So if you're available at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I highly recommend you to come on. Uh, it's going to be a space with the sponsors. So we were able to bring on people from obviously DIF and Ontology, but also Trinsic and Polygon ID. So it should be a fun celebration of this hackathon as well. So please do join us there as well. Awesome. Thank you, Humpty. All right. We'll see everyone around Discord. Thanks.